everyone. In this video, I'll be going over uh, partial differential equation or PDE classifications. Uh, the derived uh, governing equations uh, of continuity, momentum, and energy that you can find in my other videos um, are uh, those equations are, are PDEs. Um, so we want to have a way. Uh, we want to be able to classify what kind of PDE, um, what kind of PDE it is. And the reason for this is that. Um, the mathematical characteristics of how we actually solve uh, a specific type of equation depends on what kind of classification, what type of, of PDE it is. Um, and the three types of PDEs um, that we'll be looking at is uh, uh, they're <laughs> uh, elliptic, parabolic, and hyperbolic. And I'll explain what those mean uh, later and in another video more in depth. So <clears throat> we're looking at here a uh, a second order PDE generalized. So uh, we just have these coefficients a, b, c, and then h is the right hand side, and then phi in all of the and phi in this entire thing is just any arbitrary um, variable. It could be uh, velocity, temperature, pressure, anything like that. So the notation that I use up here, you can kind of see it down in this sidebar box, uh, is that phi sub x is just the first derivative with respect to x of phi, and then phi sub xx is the second order derivative of phi with respect to x. Uh, if it's phi x y, as it is here, it's uh, d phi dx, and then that term d dy. Um, and then similarly for phi sub y y. Okay, so, so we have this second order uh, PDE. And now we can assume that we have these two solutions, phi sub 1, so this is not a derivative, this is just a solution, uh, phi 1, uh, as a which is a function of x and y, and then another solution, phi2. And you can imagine that these solutions are surfaces. And if you have two surfaces in space, uh, at some point they'll intersect each other. And, and where they intersect each other, you get a, a line. And we call this the characteristic curve, uh, which I've labeled here as C1. So you can imagine that these are just two surfaces um, that are interconnecting, and then there's one line where they overlap each other. And that's the characteristic surface with a, um, and then the, the direction along the characteristic line is S. Okay, so I'm not going to go into too much about what characteristics are. There's other videos, um, mathematical videos on YouTube about characteristics. Um, maybe I'll go into that a little bit more later. But um, the, but what you need to know is that the solution and the derivative are continuous along the characteristic, but are discontinuous across the characteristic. So you might want to watch a video about. Uh, characteristic lines, um, because it is a little bit confusing the first time you see it. Um, okay, so we can have these, we, we can, we need uh, these other, these next two equations to describe how um, the derivative of this, of the variable changes along uh, the characteristic curve. And like I said, they, the solution and the derivative of the solution, so this is the derivative of the solution, phi sub x is the derivative of the solution, that is constant um, along, or continuous it's not constant, it's continuous along these, the characteristic curve. So this equation is pretty much just a chain rule expansion of this term here. So we're saying that the change in the derivative of the variable along the characteristic, so that's what the ds is, so along this characteristic, um, the change in the derivative of the flow field variable can be expressed through here. So if you actually expand this out, you end up getting a I, it's, if I say it, it's going to be confusing, but if you expand these two out the way that I, expand this and this out the way that I did down here, um, and then you can cancel the terms, you end up getting this left-hand side. So this is just the expansion uh, with the chain rule. And the same thing goes for here, which is the, again, just the change along the characteristic of the flow field derivative. Um, so again, using chain rule, we expand it out to this. So we have the phi sub xx dx ds, phi sub xy dy ds, phi sub x, y, dx, ds, plus phi sub y, y, dy, ds. Okay, so now we end up having three equations. We have one equation up here, two, and three. So we can put these into a matrix form. As shown here, I try to color code it so you can see. Um, so the so we have the, the vector or array over here is phi sub x, x, phi sub x, y, and phi sub y, y. These show up in all three equations, right? We have phi sub x, 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 y, y, y. And here we have xx, xy, plus 0yy. And then in this equation, we have xy, or 0xx plus xy, 
plus yy. Okay, so a for this equation, a times this plus b times this plus c times this gives you the first equation. This times that plus this times that plus zero times yy gives you the red equation, and similarly for the third equation. And then the right hand side, right hand side for the first equation, left hand side for the second and third equations, is this uh, array over here. So the first one is h, and then on this one is the left hand side, the d phi sub x ds, and then for the third equation is the d phi sub y ds. Okay, so we're looking at this, this is the important matrix right here. If the determinant of this matrix is zero, then we have only one solution. Um, and if the determinant is not equal to zero, then we have multiple solutions. So um, we want to have multiple solutions. The reason for this is if you have a governing equation, like the, let's just say for inviscid flow, you have the Euler equations are your governing equations. Those equations are valid for any inviscid flow within the given assumptions for the governing equation. Um, but, so the, the thing that changes uh, the solution that you get it are what boundary conditions you have, or pretty much what kind of uh, body that you put into the flow that you want to analyze the flow over. So obviously if we're using the same Euler equations for an airplane and a, and a tennis ball, they should give different solutions. Even though the equations are the same, it's the boundary conditions that you apply uh, are, is pretty much what's going to change your solution. So we want the actual equations to give us multiple solutions. So we want to set the determinant of this matrix here uh, equal to zero. So when we do this, um, when you take the determinant of this matrix, it, um, just the way that you do is you take A and ignore this right here. So we have A times dy ds times dy ds. So that's dy ds squared minus dx ds times zero, which is zero. So the first term is A dy ds squared. And then the second term will be a minus B, ignore this. And we have dx ds times dy ds minus zero times zero, so we get dx ds dy ds, and then this third one is going to be positive, so plus, ignore this, and we have dx ds times dx ds minus zero times dy ds, and that gives us dx ds squared is equal to zero, like we mentioned before. Um, now what we want to do is multiply this whole equation by ds dx squared. Uh, doing that will cancel out the ds here, and instead replace it with a dx, so we'll end up having a times dy dx squared, and that's what this term is here. And then we have minus b, and this dx ds dx squared will replace the two ds's here, and, we'll, and one of the dx squares will cancel with the top one here, and we'll get dy dx, and the last term is plus c, and that just cancels with this last term here. Okay, so dy dx that we have here in this equation now which is a second order equation, dy dx is actually the slope of the characteristic line. And again, I would recommend going to a video on characteristic lines. Um, so we can solve for uh, dy dx and in the similar way that you've seen before, and you end up getting dy dx, so the slope of the characteristic line is equal to, and this is sometimes called the, in other cases it's called the eigenvalue, so we're solving for the eigenvalue, um, is equal to uh, b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, which I'm sure you've seen before. And so what, so this is pretty much the end result that we're looking at. And what really changes the mathematical characteristics of the equation is the term inside the radical here. So this is b squared minus 4ac. So what happens is if you have b squared minus 4ac, if this term, if this whole term here is positive, so before I talk about that. Just remember that the b and the a and the c, those correspond to coefficients in in the actual PDE, in the actual governing equation PDE. And I'll go through some examples in the next video um, where I give specific examples and classify them. So if the term b squared minus 4ac is positive, that means that this is a real number inside the radical. Uh, or not inside the radical, but the, taking the radical, the positive number gives you a real number. So you have two solutions here. You have b plus that over 2a and b minus that over 2a. So that gives you two real characteristics and you end up getting a hyperbolic equation. If you have b squared minus 4ac, if this term is equal to zero, that means that the b plus that and the b minus that is the same, so you end up with one, um, one, re or one characteristic, one real characteristic. 
um, and that gives you a parabolic equation. And then if you have b squared minus 4ac is a negative number, then you have no real characteristics and you get an elliptic equation. Uh, so that's one of the many ways of classifying PDs. There's multiple other ways. I might go through a couple more if I have time um, in another video. But this is just one of the ways. It's simple. I didn't go into too much depth. So if you want to know more, just let me know. Um, or if anything was confusing and I skimmed through it too quickly, let me know. Um, and in the next videos, I'll be going over more in depth uh, hyperbolic, elliptic, and parabolic equations um, because those are important because they completely affect the way that you solve uh, or the, you, which methods you use to solve the uh, to solve the equations. Uh, okay, thank you for watching.